Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Morning Markets today. Before jumping into what's been happening in, in asset markets over the past uh, 24 hours and indeed what we can think about today, I'd just like to ask a, a small favour. Um, if you are enjoying the, the Morning Markets podcast, please do sign up to the True Potential YouTube channel and, and like the, the Morning Markets videos. It'd be very much appreciated. And indeed, you can leave comments there and things that you would you'd like us to think about in future editions as well. So then turning back to, to markets and thinking about what we've seen over the past 24 hours, um, as we touched on yesterday morning, there was definitely an increasing focus within asset markets and just the rising infection rates of COVID-19 and in particular the number of areas that we're seeing localised lockdowns to deal with that. If we think about in Australia, Melbourne, potentials in Togo and then some states in the US and indeed um, here in the UK as well. That did see equity markets come off slightly yesterday and that's to be expected given the, the implications that, that localised lockdowns do have on, on activity levels in general. So what did we see? We saw the UK FTSE fall 1.5%, the Euro stocks 50, um, down about 80 basis points. That followed through into the US where we had markets there with the NASDAQ down 90 basis points and the S&P 500 down slightly over 1% on the day. As you would expect then, and as the market sort of focused in that direction, we did see sovereign bond markets strengthen slightly. So yields on the US 10-year, the UK 10-year gilt, both came in as, as bond prices moved up. That left us with the US 10-year at 64 basis points and the UK 10-year gilt at 18 basis points. Again, in terms of the, the just the market backdrop, that played to a little bit of dollar strength. And it's just interesting to think about the currency pairs where that strength play or the strength of the dollar played out and it strengthened against the euro. And we know that the euro has been performing quite well against the dollar over recent weeks. Indeed, the, the other side of that coin was actually sterling, where sterling strengthened against the, the dollar yesterday. So just illustrating that whilst we can try and look at these things in isolation, it is very much important to take a, a balanced view and think about both sides of the, the coin within the currency pair, in particular when we're talking about the dollar relative to other currencies on a trade-weighted basis. The other asset that I think is still quite interesting in how it's performing is gold, where despite the, the strong performance of, that we've seen in, in equity markets over recent weeks, and gold continues to, to, to trade at, at close to its, its highs of $1,700 an ounce. So that's something that we continue to observe. And it's quite interesting to think about that in the context of the market backdrop that we've got, both in terms of how um, asset markets are performing, but also and the activity that we're seeing from central banks and, and governments from a fiscal perspective. Then thinking about other aspects of, of the market yesterday that were, were important and provide future direction, and we started to hear increasing discussion in the US about a further stimulus bill, again focused on supporting um, unemployment and how that would, would work its, through, its way through to support the, the, the economy returning to a more normal environment and indeed we have the Chancellor Rishi Sunak uh, discussing and presenting today uh, his thoughts on on a mini budget as it's being being termed in the press. There's a lot of speculation in the press about what this may or may not include. I'm not going to, to add anything to that. I'm going to wait and see what, what's announced and then comment on that tomorrow. I think in both cases what we do need to think about in the US and in the UK is, is striking that balance between what is needed uh, to support the economy through this, this difficult period, but then also what is required to encourage and ensure that individuals return to the workforce and that we do get that benefit in the, the employment data, but more importantly, that that plays its way through into economic activity, productivity, and then ultimately economic growth over the medium to longer term. In equity markets across Asia, what have we seen overnight? We've seen a bit of a mixed picture with a number of markets lower, taking the trend from what we have seen in the US and Europe yesterday. And then we continue to see China, um, Chinese equity markets uh, buck that trend with the, the, the CSI continuing to rise after its strong uh, movement yesterday. 
again maybe that is it's, it's merited um in the extent if we think about where china has been through covid 19 how that economy is further through the the reopening phase the return to to normal um, activity levels over the course of the past couple of months and that's something just to to continue to to observe over coming weeks as well that's it for today from me i'd just like to to close with um, my colleague chris leyland will be posting his usual uh, chart of the week so please look out for that later in the week or later today i should say and then um just as i said if you do find these useful please do like them on our youtube channel many thanks 